Welcome to lecture 5. In this lecture we will create a globe based on a sphere geometry using an earth map as its material. We will also add lights to our scene. To create the earth we are going to use one of the other standard geometries of FreeJS, the sphere. The sphere geometry takes in several arguments. The first one is the radius and the second and third one define how detailed our sphere will be. Let's take a closer look in the documentation. In the documentation we find this wireframe of a sphere. In real time we can change the properties. The radius will make our sphere smaller or bigger. The width and height segments define how the sphere is divided into squares. The more squares, the more detailed our sphere will be. But if you take a closer look, you will see that the squares themselves also are divided into two, creating two triangles. And if we slide the width and height segments all the way to the left, so to the minimum, you see that our sphere shape is now transformed into a pyramid of triangles. There we come to the heart of the matter. In FreeJS and a lot of other 3D environments, geometries are based on polygons. A polygon consists of vertices, edges and a face. A vertex is no more than a point in space, so it's defined by its x, y and z positions. The lines that connect vertices are called the edges. And here we see that our three vertices and edges form a wireframe. And the wireframe is the mathematical representation of the 3D object. The space inside the edges is the face. When we want to texture our sphere with the earth map, we are going to use a material. The material takes care that our texture is mapped onto the faces of our model. And that's how we come from an image to a texture on our sphere. Let's take a look at the code. Our earth material is instantiated as a mesh standard material, so no longer a basic material, because the standard material allows us to use textures. As the basic material, also the standard material takes in an object that describes its properties. I've commented out the color property, because I only use this property for testing. What we are interested in is the map. The map property is where we are going to load the earth map. But before we can do so, we first have to download an earth map from Wiki. This is available under the Creative Commons license in different sizes. I've chosen the 1024 by 512 size. So download the map, name it earth.png and place it in a new folder with the directory assets model textures. Now we can create our texture loader. A texture loader is able to load images that can be used as textures. Then we create our earth map by loading our image into the texture loader. So now we can assign the earth map to our map property of our material. I also have set the side property to 2. This means that our texture can be seen from outside but also from inside. Not very useful for our earth, but it will be useful for our strawberry model later. You see that I have used the string literal for the path to our image. So the texture path is no more than a string variable that helps us to create paths more easily. As we now have defined our earth geometry based on a sphere geometry and our earth material in which we have used the texture loader and the earth map to define the map property, we can now construct our object which is a new mesh taking in the earth geometry and earth material. Then we set the position of the object in which we push it back minus 10 in the Z direction. And finally we add our object to the scene. Then it's time to test our script. And maybe to our surprise we still see our cube, but we don't see the globe. This is because we are using the standard material. In general materials can only be seen when they are enlightened. In fact, the standard material has a lot of properties that describe the behavior of the material on light. The map we are using is just one of them. So it's fair to say that light and material have a one-to-one -one relationship. The only exception is the basic material, which makes it very suitable for testing purposes. In our scene we are going to use two different kinds of lights. A hemispheric or ambient light and a directional or spotlight. The hemispheric light takes in three arguments. First argument is the color of the light high in the sky. The second argument is the color of the light down to the earth. The third argument is the intensity of the light. 
Next to the ambience we create with the hemispheric light, we create a direct sunlight with the spotlight. The spotlight takes in the color of the light and the intensity. Next to that we also have to define some other properties, like its position, the angle of the light, which we set to 90 degrees, and the target, so where the spotlight is looking at, and you will see it's the position of the Earth. Having added the lights to the scene, we now can see our globe. To make things a little bit more realistic, in the animate function we update the rotation over the Y axis and I remove everything that has to do with the cube. The result is a rotating globe. And that's it for now, so see you in the next lecture.